Yo, it is your boy. Today we are reacting to when Mike Tyson met the warrior in the ring. First of all, I don't know who the fuck they're talking about. Second of all, you alright, I didn't mean by saying what I was about to say. They call you the warrior and you about to meet Mike. You know, guys, going on there feeling. Keep that in your time. It is Cause he said he's the hottest, bro. Cause you see how he's hitting. Harder and harder now to find anybody. see why he wants to do it. I mean, no fight. fighter wants to get run over by a truck. There is a class of fighter that makes up the early part of every champion's journey. These boxers have many names and labels. Whatever they are called, they are simply stepping stones for the promising champion to build their record and further their career. And then, when their usefulness is exhausted, they usually fade away. One such fighter was Oklahoma professional boxer, Lorenzo Boyd. He fought many famous boxers of his day, and was part of Mike Tyson's journey to a world title. After their fight in 1986, Tyson became one of two WBC heavyweight contenders. The name Lorenzo Boyd may not be too familiar to the average boxing fan. But avid fight fans will surely recognize the name. Boyd was a warrior who, the saying goes, fought everyone during his professional career, which spanned two decades. Turning pro at age 23, Boyd first competed at cruiserweight and won his first six fights before moving up to heavyweight. He was first defeated by Steve Eisenbarth by a majority decision. After two victories in a row, Ooh. he suffered his next defeat from with capable the... puncher Fuck Mike me. Williams. <laughs> Just at this time, Mike Tyson made his debut in professional boxing and began to destroy everyone in his path. Oh! Before the fight with Mike Tyson in June of 1985, okay. Boyd fought two more times and won both fights ahead of schedule. Well, I just intend on taking the fight to the guy. I don't think anyone's uh, done that. And uh, I just plan on going in there. And actually, you hear all trainers and other fighters They'll say, don't fight in another guy's game when I plan to get right in his game with him. My stable mate of Quick Tillers, uh, he kind of broke that ice on his mystique. You know, everyone in the country was a very intimidated. I know why I'm shaking and, my head. Uh, Tillers let everyone know uh, this guy is vulnerable. Makes makes lots of mistakes. Uh, Tillers opened that up. And uh, I compared Tillers for this fight. He also helped me in return. And I'm ready for the guy, and I've also examined the, the things Mr. Tyson does, his flaws, and I know what I'm going to do for him. Oh, this shit sounds amazing. Before the fight with Lorenzo Boyd, the 20-year-old Tyson was undefeated with an impressive record of 23-0. In 1985, the first year of his professional career, Tyson had 15 fights, where he won all the victories by knockout. Through July 1986, Mike scored another eight spectacular victories. Damn. In June, you gotta watch he held two fights where he spent less than five minutes in the ring combined. Ugly face. Boxing fans and Tyson's opponents were both perplexed why a five foot ten inch heavyweight boxer was so successful and seemingly invincible. But it was precisely his short stature that became the main trump card of the unique style of Iron Mike. Because if he were taller, his signature style would not work. Mm. Tyson worked in the so-called peekaboo stance, right. where the gloves are pressed tightly against the head and body. In general, this stance is considered not Ooh. aggressive. The boxer is always in a defensive position, and it is difficult for him to punch while blocking. High defense is offset by reduced aggression. But Tyson was the exact opposite. Why? Due to his height compared to other heavyweights, the peekaboo stance put his hands in perfect position to right. hit from the bottom. Damn, Mike! An excellent trajectory for starting a strike. Such blows are not available to a tall boxer. Tyson's signature punches are hooks and crosses <laughs> that are very convenient to punch from an upward trajectory. The peekaboo stance allowed Tyson to easily defend himself, and this was vital because he often positioned himself where he could run into oncoming blows. Now you've gone back, the last two fights have been first round knockouts. This fight uh, tonight with Lorenzo Boyd, uh, people expect will be a quick one also. Do these fights help you, the short ones, the ones that end so quickly? Well, every fight helps me when you're coming into the ring. When I get in the ring and I'm in there and I'm performing under all the pressure and everything, 
I feel it. Plus, yeah. This nigga Mike, bro. Was unbeatable at one point. He was unbeatable. The fight took place he, on July 11th, 1986 he had all in Swan the, the Lake, tools, New York. Except Tyson weighed in at 220 you know pounds. Niggas be. And Boyd was really wasn't his pounds fault. lighter. It wasn't Tyson's fault. After the bell, Tyson took a dominant position and began to put pressure on Boyd. He immediately broke Boyd's nose, and it was rumored that it had been the first blow. Mike entered the ring with a left hand that had not fully recovered from an injury in his last fight, but it did not give him any difficulties. Several times, Boyd tried to counterattack with single blows, but immediately found himself defending from an onslaught of punches from his opponent. Going into a clinch was something that Lorenzo was familiar with, but Tyson was also more successful here as well. His powerful uppercuts flew within millimeters of Boyd's head. Damn. And Lorenzo Boyd is you can hear it. Lorenzo started the second round actively. He approached and from the clinch tried to find a gap in Tyson's defense. Boyd's punches were Ooh. weak compared to Iron Mike's punches. After several significant blows to the body, Tyson delivered a series of powerful uppercuts, Ooh. striking Boyd in the jaw and knocking him out. Boyd didn't get up. At around 1 minute and 43 seconds of the second round, Tyson ah, won his 24th consecutive victory damn. and remained an undefeated fighter. It was Mike's 22nd knockout and he was ranked second by the World Boxing Council. Five months later, after knocking out three more of his next we opponents, to that Iron Mike fight. became the youngest world yeah, heavyweight champion. Assess his performance. How does he punch? He's stronger than I thought he was. Uh, he called me real good and... Uh, Real cage down here on the uh, left side, and I became fearful then because I told myself I have to remind myself not to bring my hand down to protect it. He hit it again. I brought my elbow down. In case you don't know, it's a right hand and then a right uppercut to the chin. Is he the hardest hitter you've ever been in with? Yes, I, I fought at Terry Anderson, and they considered him a big banger, but uh, he doesn't punch anything like Mike. <laughs> That's this reaction, man. If y'all want more reactions like this, let me know in the comments and I got y'all. He don't punch nothing like Mike. <laughs> See ya. Don't fight in another guy's game when I plan to get right in his game. Hey! Come back! Hi. You already know, man. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, man. Hit the bell so you can be notified every time I upload a video. Look ugly. Before I walk around the way I do, man, I don't be worrying about none of these motherfuckers, man. Word up, man. God is my motherfucking bodyguard. Word the mother.